The leaders of Canada, the United States, and Mexico will issue emphatic denials, but their hidden motive propelling them in creating the Security and Prosperity Partnership is to advance one step closer to the centuries-old goal of the world government known as the New World Order. Well, the politicians laugh it off, and if you ask you know, anybody in a position of authority in Washington about the idea that, that there's a plan well underway to create a North American Union along the lines of the European Union, which would be composed, among other things, of a great big superhighway system that would connect all three countries. Um, in fact, there you see a map uh, extrapolating from, uh, from some information that the people who believe in this. It's a, it's a fairly widely believed theory, believe it or not. All right, well, what is, the, what is the background? What's going on here? Oh, Wolf, there's a lot of talk in the blogosphere and uh, conspiracy theorists who believe that this uh, summit was really a secret plot, if you will, to establish a super government in support of big business, that even there would be some sort of super highway that would be traveling through all three of the countries. Uh, all leaders got quite a bit of a chuckle out of this one. We even heard from Prime Minister Harper, who said, look, they manufacture the rules uh, for manufacturing jelly beans are different than Canada as well as the United States. If you standardize the jelly bean, it's not a threat to Canada's sovereignty. So obviously uh, a lot of suspicion on the part of what this summit was really about but they assured people look there's nothing really to worry about I'm amused by the difference between what actually takes place in the meetings and what some are trying to you know, say takes place it's, a, it's quite comical actually when you realize the difference between reality and what some people are talking on TV about you were a visionary you proposed a lot of, of uh, ideas long before they were ever adopted. What do you now see as the future of Oklahoma? I see us as becoming an international state. Uh, you, you just look around, we have many international companies uh, in Oklahoma now because we went globally. And now with the NAFTA highway, if you're against the NAFTA highway, fine, but we have one. It is suddenly clearer why a company from Spain called Sintra wants to be the gatekeeper on this new highway structure. Human Events Magazine recently had this description. It said the North American Super Corridor Coalition is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to developing this international integrated multimodal transportation system along the international mid-continent trade and transportation corridor. This is public hearing and that means we're here to listen. People recognize what a great state Texas is to live in, work, and do business. Over the last 25 years, the population of Texas has increased by more than 8 million. In fact, each month, there are more than 30,000 new Texans. And by 2025, the population of Texas is expected to exceed 36 million people. Along with the increased population comes an increase in traffic on an already congested transportation system. Well, uh, in Texas, we're working on the Texas. Uh, there are groups that are working on something bigger. Uh, multi-state efforts, I think the NASCO, the North American right. Super Four yeah. uh, Coalition. Mm. Uh, and that, that effort is something that, that, that Texas does participate in. But Texas is first. Uh, I think Texas is probably uh, first in this. Highways and railways. As uh, you three leaders meet here, there are a growing number of people in each of your countries who have expressed concern about the Security and Prosperity Partnership. This is addressed to all three of you. Can you say today that this is not a prelude to a North American Union, similar to a European Union? Uh, are there plans to build some kind of superhighway connecting all three countries? And do you believe all of these theories about a possible erosion of national identity stem from a lack of transparency from this partnership? Well, let me begin. I, uh, and I guess I've read some things from my opposition in Canada. I'm not sure these are generally expressed concerns, but a couple of my opposition leaders have speculated on massive water diversions and uh, uh, superhighways 
to the continent, maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure as well. Um, <laughs> today's announcement is about building on Winnipeg's place at the heart of the continent. And it's about the federal and provincial government, as well as the city and the business community, coming together during a period of extraordinary global economic uncertainty to transform a crisis into opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to announce that the Government of Canada is making a substantial contribution to the further development of Winnipeg's inland port. The port is an ambitious, far-sighted initiative, a massive transportation, trade, manufacturing, distribution, warehousing, and logistics center. On Maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure as well. <laughs> on 20,000 acres of industrial land here in northwest Winnipeg, adjacent to the James Richardson International Airport. Under our Building Canada plan, which is the largest national infrastructure renew renewal effort in half a century, our government is partnering with the province and Centreport Canada to build Centreport Canada Way. This four-lane divided high-speed transportation corridor will enable the safer and more efficient movement of goods between Northwest Winnipeg's major intermodal and distribution facilities. The design and construction of Centreport Canada Way will create jobs and opportunities for construction workers, paving crews, engineers, and other contractors and suppliers just when these jobs are most needed. Planning and design work is already underway and construction will begin early next year and extend into 2011. I will leave it to Premier Dewar to give you uh, more of the details, but let me just note once again that today's announcement is part of our government's economic action plan to guide Canada through the global recession. In the highly competitive global economy, our growth is increasingly tied to trade. We need a strategy that capitalizes on our inherent strengths. Winnipeg's big strength, location, the center of not only Canada but North America, means Winnipeg can be the focal point for trade, importing and exporting with the goal to tap in to the booming Asia economy. Maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure as well. I think we ought to consider ourselves as the gateway to global trade. Chris Lawrence chairs the newly formed Mayor's Trade Council. This group of people has to figure out what Winnipeg needs to become a big player in the import-export business. There are trade opportunities that we can take advantage of if we're first out of the gate, and that's what this announcement is about. There is so much we can do if people go out there proactively and try and make it happen, and that's what we're going to do. We're not going to sit and wait. We're not going to make excuses. We're gonna, we've got eight months for this committee to basically come up with suggestions, and from there we're going to go. Manitoba is also taking a major role in the development of a mid-continent trade corridor, connecting our northern port of Churchill with trade markets throughout the central U.S. and Mexico. You come in from equal distance from Can I-35, Canada, Mexico. I-40, Pacific Atlantic, they cross in Oklahoma City. And they're the halfway points of the two coasts, and the two boundaries. And so how far can you go into the United States? You can go to Oklahoma. And this is a bipartisan move. Republicans and Democrats alike all expecting campaign contributions from multinational corporations. We've had here so far a Bush-Clinton advanced plan to take the North American Free Trade Agreement and advance it into the Security Prosperity Partnership. We say if we do not stop it, we'll soon be at a North American common market, followed by a North American community, followed by a North American union. And